<laughs> That's right. We now celebrate the second ceremony, the Nisuin. The blessings we are about to recite, I in Hebrew and other members of the congregation in English, are to express our gratitude to God for the miracle of life in general and for the sanctity of married life in particular. Because there are seven blessings in all, they have come to be known simply as the Sheva Brachot, the seven blessings. In our tradition, seven carry special significance. It is the number of wholeness and holiness. It is the number of Shabbat, the seventh day, and thus the number of peace. May the Sheva Brachot confer blessing on each and every day and every week of Shai's and Karen's life together. Baruch Atarnai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Borei Peri HaGafen Number two. Baruch Atarnai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Shahako Bara Lichvodo. Praise our praise are you God who sh who shaped the universe all thing creates speaks of your glory Number 3 Baruch atarnai Eloheinu melech haolam yotzer haadam Number 4 Baruch atarnai Eloheinu melech haolam asher yatzar et adam betsamo betsalam Number five. Baruch Atarnai, Misameach Zion, Bivaneha. Number six. Sameach to Samach, Reim Hahuvim, Kisamecha Hayetzir Habegan Eden, Mikedem. Baruch atarnai, misameach atan v'chalav. Let these loving friends taste of the bliss you gave to the first man and woman in the Garden of Eden in the days of old. Praised are you the presence who dwells with bride and groom in delight. And the last. Baruch atarnai, Eloheinu melech haolam, asher baras ason v'simcha, chatan v'chalav. Gilarina titsa vechedva, ahava ve achava, ve shalom ve rehud. Mehera aronai Eloheinu, yishama ve are Yehuda, uve chutzot Yerushalayim. Kol sason ve kol simcha, kol chatan ve kol kala. Let, Let the mountains, mountains of Israel, Israel dance. Let, Let the, the gates, gates of Jerusalem ring with the sounds of joy, song, merriment, and delight. The, the voice of the groom and the voice of the bride. The happy shouts of their friends and companions. We praise you, God, who brings bride and groom together to rejoice in each other. Amen. Once again, shall we take a sip of the wine? Karen, you're back. You're back. You're back. You're back. And will you share the cup of wine once again with your bride?
He's designer. <laughs> this is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our sight. What a beautiful sight it is to see two people standing under the kupa with love in their eyes and joy in their hearts. For you have come together into God's presence to consecrate yourselves to each other in a state of marriage. And according to our tradition, it is truly God who makes marriages. For how else can we often understand the often bizarre circumstances which bring people together? <laughs> now there's a story of a wealthy Roman woman who came to one of our rabbis and asked, in how many days did the Holy One, praise be he, create the world? And the rabbi replied, in six days. And she asked, and from that time until now, what's God been doing? And the rabbi said, God joins couples decreeing who should be married to whom. She said, is that it? Is that all there is? I can do that too. I have many female and male slaves, and I can couple them all in one hour. And he replied, for you it may be easy, but for God it's as difficult as parting the Red Sea. <laughs> and they each went their own way. And what did she do? She brought together 500 male slaves and 500 female slaves, and she placed them in rows and simply went down the rows and said, you'll be married to that one, you'll be married to this one. And she did it all in one night. When morning came, they all came before her. One had a fractured skull, one had a black eye, one had a broken arm, the other one had a sprained ankle. And they all said, I don't want to be married to that one. She said, sent it once for the rabbi and said, my teacher, your law is true, beautiful, and praiseworthy. You have spoken well. God's work is indeed beautiful and praiseworthy, for he has brought together this couple, Taryn and Shai, and they love for the, each other, the love they have for each other should sure serve as a model for us all. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our sight. When we met, I thought immediately of this Midrash and how it applies so beautifully to the two of you. After all, what were the chances of the two of you ever meeting? Who could have scripted such a scenario? <laughs> Taryn, after deciding on a whim to begin a new life in Sebastopol, never having been there, and after driving for days across country to a new community, a new roommate, to start a new life, who could have imagined that you'd meet the man you'd want to marry in a coffee house? <laughs> and who could have imagined that he would be Jewish in Sebastopol, not exactly a hotbed of Jewish life, <laughs> and Israeli, no less. <laughs> and then two months or so later, to meet again at the one annual Jewish communal event that we have in the entire Sonoma Jewish County, this had to be the work of God. And there was Shai playing drums in the drum circle. It truly seems that God has made this match. And then driving back across country to meet your family, Taryn, Shai decided to affirm your love for each other by asking you to marry him on Valentine's Day with a ring that he designed by himself. So what was it that made the two of you fall in love with each other? Well, Shai said that he liked the strong, wise woman that you are, Taryn. You're not impulsive or dramatic. Well, you know, today's drama. <laughs> <laughs> and very easy to have as a partner. 